Now, the other thing about that reminds me of the old and new. And I think an example from Tilburg is great here, which is I went to this, there was an event we were in at Comeback City. And I thought, oh, I've got a bloody another textile museum, I thought to myself. I didn't think that, actually. Sorry, Gerhard. But I did think, do I need to see another piece of textile machinery? But when I then went there, I discovered that it was a textile lab where the old machinery was creating new forms of textile. There was a showroom of things. So the sustainability I'm talking about there is a means of using the culture of the past and then merging into the future. So this was completely surprising to me. This example, you know, which is famous, of course, the Emsha Park region, one of the most fantastic regeneration areas in Europe. I won't talk about that. But, I'm sorry, you just know this. But what's interesting, they're the year of culture this year, and it's because the EU ruled, it has to be called Essen, although it's the Ruhr. And you can see already there that it says culture links Essen, and it links Essen in a much bigger way. And the most astonishing project, successful project, was to close on the 8th of June, 50 kilometers of motorway. And three million people occupied the motorway, which meant for the first time they could relate to the totality of their place in a way that did more about, let's call this social sustainability, reminded people of connection that through urban engineering had been splintered apart and brought people together in what they wanted in any case, which was this notion that the Ruhr is one complete and a whole thing. And so as you can see, their theme was change through culture, culture through change, which is exemplifying the point I'm trying to make. And within that, this is in the Zechisolfkein, they said, this is World Heritage Site, where they say, even the dust is World Heritage dust. So you can see this <laughs> dust that has been there for a while, that lingers still. But within that place, and the museum, you've got, in a sense, this new thing coming up which is the staircase, which reminds us of the steel production and so on. But at the same time, it's a museum about the past and so on. So sustainability, and this is what I'm using as an example here, is this question of past, future, present, and so on as well. And their partner city is Istanbul, which again says it's about building bridges between cultures, we may be using artists in this context, but where, why I'm using that example is because this is the sort of tension you see in Istanbul. You see a mosque, and next to it is a place called Trendy. We'd never call a place Trendy anymore. Nevertheless, it's selling those naked models. So you can imagine the interesting tension point precisely at, at, at that physical location. Or well, here, we've covered up so many rivers, but now we're uncovering them. And Providence, Rhode Island has decided to celebrate the uncovering of it through something called fire and water. And in the summer, about 20 times, they bring the fire out into the water. And here people are meeting each other again for the first time as they celebrate the recapturing of the retro and, and having retrofitted that place. Another example you know of is from Seoul, Chong Li Chung, where the mayor did this. He became president. Uh, and it's become a place of meaning and connection and communication between people of all different types of classes. So rich and poor is broken down in some sense, and it's eight kilometers long. So these are the sort of elements that I hope you're judging. Just one more example, really, just because we were on water. Uh, everybody knows where this is. This is not Photoshop. This is Venice. Um, this isn't constructed. This is reality. But one of the problems here, this is where this cultural thing becomes very interesting. We're in one of the most amazing places in the world, and you see Swatch watches. Yes, uh, you're getting the idea. And Tris, whatever that bloody place is, what is it? Trisadi. Um, and you're thinking to yourself, yes, I did want to see the Doge's Palace, but I can only see an ad. Um, what is this about? Is this lovely? Is this beautiful? Is this disgusting? Now, my view in the end is, if these imageries were, I don't mind people sponsoring things, 
as wonderful as the thing they're covering up, rather than just an ordinary boring ad, I would say that's a fantastic cultural project. But unfortunately, I don't think it quite is. So I quite like what the Biennale itself does, something having the Zeppelin zoom around, switching between a few buildings, or the cafe of the Biennale looking like a complete immersive experience. So what I'm trying to focus on is issues in here is one that's not clear cut. How do we think about it? So here's one from Copenhagen, where there's a factory wall like it could be in, in Huddersfield, where there were lots of immigrant people on the other side there who were not being very good, let's call it that, these young lads, and even these young women. And what this photographer, that old guy, did is he basically allowed them annually to tell their story of their evolving city, which to some extent has made the tension that is in that estate reduced it through what we might have historically called a community arts program. Now, finally, this is what, this is five minutes and I've finished, is I've developed this index which tries to combine cultural sustainability resilience issues together and using creativity as a tool, which I've used in a number of cities around Europe, and I developed this with Biscay and, and Bilbao over the last year. And the interesting thing, and I'm just thinking of your indexes, we basically start with some core facts, and obviously I looked at all the indexes and the ranking that exists around the world and stuff, and thought, let's forget some of this stuff about unemployment rates. Well, you'll have them there, we know they exist and they're important. But what's more important is the internal self-assessment plus the peer group assessment, because that's recapturing judgment. It's not just some, in theory, objective facts. So what we've done there is really worked with people, and for us it's not the school that's important or ranking, it's the conversation and complexity within the school that counts. So for example, in Canberra, this was about the political framework, how well it was doing. The most interesting thing is not that they did below average, it's one to ten, but the fact that there were some people who it was only one and others thought it was seven, which means there's this vast disagreement in the city about that particular topic, which is this one here, the political and public framework. Is that framework one? Are the rules aligned to you to become sustainable, to allow you to use your imagination? Is your bureaucracy a bit snarled up? The second indicator is how distinctive vital are you, which is about of course, identity. You may be very distinctive, but you may be very lifeless as a city. So that's the question. The third is, how open and trusting are you? If we want this behavioural change that we're discussing, that seems to me one of the most important issues to address. Are people open-minded or closed-minded in your place? Is there a sort of dialogue on new issues? Fourthly, how entrepreneurial are you coming up with new ideas about sustainability? Are they interesting? Are they not? Is it allowed? Is, it, is social entrepreneurship validated? How agile strategically is your city to respond to the changes by being strategically principled but tactically flexible? For example, to see a difference from a platform of operation. <coughs> being strategically agile is about you know, three-dimensional chess. That sort of thinking. How is the learning landscape that is telling us how we can do these things in new ways? Is it in the old fashioned way or is it in, in, in a different way? How are we communicating <coughs> across the boundaries? Obviously, rail and road and all of that, but more in terms of people to people communication. What's the level of that in your city? How much information is there that enables us and empowers us? How is the place itself, and how is it being made and developed? The place might be good, but it's developing very badly. This is Bilbao, as you know. And more or less finally, livability and well-being, which is obviously about facilities and things like that, hospitals and bicycle paths. How strong is your city on that? And perhaps finally, how professionally are you in taking the idea, the broadest idea of sustainability, and turning it round and making it reality. <laughs> I mean, I initially, when I saw this, thought this was completely unprofessional. But now, as I look at it more closely, I keep on thinking, 
this is absolutely wonderful. <laughs> the fact that they have left it like that. But anyway, you get the idea. So really what it's about is leadership. Not the leadership that just sticks in a hole, but the leadership that can tell a story of a place that enables people to forget car parking problems and so that they want to be maker shapers and co-creators of your new city. Thank you very much.